Shalom Chavrim. I'm Stephen Ben Danun with the Danun Institute of Biblical Research. Beautiful morning here this morning, and I wanted to just share with you um, something the Lord laid on my heart last night was um, to seek Him, to seek Him earnestly. And so I began studying scriptures in regards to seeking the Lord, and in the process of it, I ran across several passages already that not directly for the purpose that I'm seeking God for, but for the purpose of uh, being a blessing, just insights that even I've not picked up on myself before. So I wanted to share some of those with you, or share one of them with you, I should say. And out of a book that I wouldn't have expected to find hidden, beautiful, prophetic mysteries that are laying in, in, in the book of Chronicles. But if you go to the book of Chronicles in the 15th chapter, there is a very beautiful passage here that, uh, that just really caught my attention. Uh, let's begin at uh, uh, verse 8. And when Asa, Asa, by the way, was the king of Israel at this time, uh, the Lord was pleased with Asa, but uh, definitely was not pleased with his mother. And it says here, the words and prophecy of Oded, the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols <clears throat> out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh out of Simon, for they fell to him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that the Lord his God was with him." So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the fifteenth year of the reign of Asa. And they offered unto the Lord the same time of the spoil which they had brought, seven hundred oxen and seven thousand sheep. And they entered in into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. Now, it's interesting that we're seeing the house of Israel gathering together and going into a covenant with God to seek the Lord with all their heart and with all their soul. And, of course, Judah is actually where this kind of starts off at. Asa, um, <clears throat> being, being uh, the king of Judah, this is where the inspiration comes from. It perfectly matches the scripture and the prophecy in Zechariah 12 where Zechariah speaks about how that uh, Nathan and, 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 and uh, David, Shemai, the Levites, and the families that had remained, they would repent uh, at, the, at the recognizing that the Messiah had been, had been thrust through. And so evidently, of course, we look at those names, we realize that these are all members of the, of the house of Judah. It's the tribe of Judah, tribe of, of Benjamin, and the Levites, etc., that were there in the time when Yeshua was actually crucified. So when we're looking at this, I look at this more from a prophetic standpoint, because watch what he says, And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and out of Manasseh and out of Simon, for they fell to him out of Israel in abundance. Suddenly there is this huge influx of other tribes that have not even been there before. Now, ironically, even the tribe of Manasseh was discovered. Uh, Michael Frund, a friend of ours with IsraelReturns.org, uh, ours is IsraelReturns.com, his is .org. Michael actually discovered the tribe of Manasseh in India and has worked to bring them back home again. So just a little, little insight there to show you how Scripture is being fulfilled as a prophetic overtone in this case here. So it says in uh, verse 12, they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul, that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. Now that may sound a little bit harsh, but if you think about it, it's prophetic as well. Because in this day here, when Israel when they begin to recognize who their Messiah is, they will put away the gods that they've been serving in Israel. And they will seek the Lord their God with all their heart and with all their mind and with all their soul. 
But the thing is, is whoever does not come into the covenant with God, which that covenant is Christ, that's when that soul, that whether it be man or woman, small or great, will be cut off. You see, Israel was pardoned. Now there's, I know there's some people that don't believe that, but I'll be doing a message. I'm, I'm wanting to say this next message here because I want to film it over there on the Mount of Olives from the Kidron Valley there. A message I think will really bless your heart here. I'll try to do that by Friday. Get down over there to the Mount of Olives for you so you can hear a message that the Lord has really laid on my heart that will help you to understand that better. But he says here, in the 13th verse, excuse me, in the 14th verse, and, the, and they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with coronets. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with, all, with their whole desire. And he was found of them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. I mean, look, at there, you got the millennial reign typed out right here. He gives them rest. They seek him with all their heart, and they find him. They will find out who the Messiah is. It's a prophetic speaking of Yeshua as well here. Um, here's an, verse 16 really struck me here. And also concerning Ma, uh, <clears throat> Macha, the mother of Asa, the king, he removed her from being queen because she had made an idol in a grove. And Asa cut down her idol and stamped it and burnt it at the brook of Kidron. The Kidron, of course, the brook of Kidron is there in the Kidron Valley. And it's interesting, it was, he called her, it was her mother and removed her as being queen. Now that just brings to mind, I haven't sat there and done the research on it, but I know in, uh, I believe it's in, uh, oh gosh, I don't know if it's in the book of Revelation or where it's at, but there's a, there's a passage that says that she sits as a queen and she is no widow. Now this is a direct uh, verse uh, to the Vatican. And the Vatican does claim to be a queen and is no, uh, will see no widowhood. She will not be thrust out. But ironically, this here says that Asa's mother was the queen. Well, the very one that helped reestablish Israel, Israel as a nation was the Vatican. Because the Vatican, but the Vatican's intent was not to serve the Lord their God with all their heart and with all their mind. It was to be able to set up their own idols to be able to set up their own places. In fact, this morning I was thinking about that when I read this about Asa's mother, that she had set up these idols. Because if you think about it, right there in the old city, in Jerusalem, in the very center, we have the, the, the sepulcher. There's a Catholic church there. And to the north, south, east, and west, there are Catholic churches. On the Mount of Olives, there, there's a Catholic church. Over on Mount Zion is a Catholic church. <clears throat> Over uh, at Joppa Gate, there is a Catholic church. And again, to the north side, there is a Catholic church on the northern wall. It's kind of interesting. All these idols that have been set up. But nonetheless, it looks like that Asa's mother, uh, Mahacha, says that the king who he removed her from being queen. You see, the true queen, or the true bride, well, let me put it like this here. In this case, she claims to be queen. The bride of Christ is engaged. She's engaged to be married, and once she becomes married, she is a princess. But of course, the Vatican claims to be the queen. She believes in replacement theology that she has taken the place of Israel. I wonder why Asa had to remove her. I'm Stephen Bindanoon with the Institute of Biblical Research. God bless you, and I hope your day will be blessed today. In the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach.